Well, I don't know about you guys, but I know what I'd rather have for the money. I'd definitely have this over my CB1000R, no question. Hey guys, hope you're all okay. Join me on this lovely sunny day on my new bike. And here she is. My new 1290 Super Duke R, 2019 model, not 2020 model. And I'll go into why I've got this bike instead of the newest model on this ride. This is my first actual ride out on this bike. You can see by the tires. Look at those, super new for about three miles on it. So I'm going to go meet my mate Big Z on his new Hypermotard. So right guys, this video is not going to be a detailed review. It is literally my first ride out on it. The roads are a bit damp. Tyres are brand new. I've got to be a bit careful. Just going to have a little chat about the deal I did, why I swapped in my CB1000R for this. And anything else I can think of. I'm not going to go into anything too detailed at all. Right guys, while I'm chatting now, I might as well just quickly go over what I've added to the bike. I've got Evotech tail tidy, Evotech exhaust hanger, Evotech radiator guard. They're all Evotech obviously. KTM power parts, I've got the mirrors, the bar ends, tank pad. And I think that's it actually, KTM wise. Oh, I've got a seat cowl. My seat cowl's in the, coming in the post, it's out of stock. I am going to change the pipe at some point. It's quite loud as it is standard, it looks ugly. That's the worst thing on the bike, probably the pipe, but bar that, it's just spot on. So I'll change the pipe probably for an Austin Racing end can or something. So not urgent at the moment to get that changed, not in a rush. But yeah, she's a beauty, absolute beauty. Right guys, let's get on the road, have a chat, and then go and meet Bigsy on his Hyper Motard. Right, so, this bike, let's start from the beginning. I was sitting on the sofa about a week ago and a little advert popped up on eBay. I thought, oh, Super Duke cars, 2019, always loved them. Thought I didn't think much of it. I said to my brother, oh look, this deal's quite good. And it was with Kestrel Honda in Coventry. The, uh, the guy I deal with there is called Jordan, top man, so helpful absolutely superbly helpful so i rang him up and said right i've got this honda cb1000r haven't done many miles on it i said i uh, had a back operation last year i'd done six i think it was six seven hundred miles on it you know what can you do if i give you my honda cb1000r and you give me this super Duke car and i've got pcp deal uh, that was on the honda already and, and my, luckily, my Honda was from Kestrel Honda in Coventry. I think they've got two different dealerships there. So that was the good thing. I was trading in a Honda uh, to a KTM dealer that has also got a Honda dealership. So that was the good thing. So I'm not going to go into details of figures and stuff, but put it this way, compared to the new bike, all spec'd up, I've saved probably between four and five thousand pounds. I couldn't resist this deal. It's just too good to lose. I think most of now, the brand new uh, 2019 models are probably all gone. There's only probably a couple left in the UK because the 2020 bikes are starting to come through. So guys, yeah, there's no way the new model is worth four or five grand more than this, no way. And I like the look of this better as well, not being biased, I think this looks better than the new model. And I'm never gonna go on the track, that's not my thing. So I'm not interested in the new model. So I've I just found one of the last 2019 Super Duke cars in the UK for a bargain price. Superb price. Couldn't resist it. And also my mate Rat has got the same bike. He picked his up yesterday. His was pre-regged and it was even cheaper than mine. I think his was even a thousand pounds cheaper than this was. But with the PCP deal I was doing with the interest rate, it was better to go for a brand new bike for me than go for a pre-regged one. I think Rat got his from the brilliant guys at Jim Aim, who I always love using, but guys, the deal was better with Kestrel KTM because I was giving them back my Honda CB1000R. I love my little Honda, 
but you cannot compare that Honda CB1000R to this bike, it's just in no way. This is a completely different weapon. Anyone who's ridden one of these will know. I've ridden, I've ridden a couple of them in Spain in the Pyrenees and they're just weapons, just superb. So that's the story guys really. And obviously I've got to run it in. I've only done, I don't know, probably done about 10 miles on it. So I've got a stay below 6,000 RPMs. But that's fine. It's just good to get used to it. I've not even played around with the modes. I'm in street mode. I've, I've not even linked my phone to the uh, to the app. Bloody hell, it's windy. So I've not. I only got it the other day delivered, and I've not even really looked at it. I did a few of the EvoTech parts, and that was it. But you know what? It feels so light. It's not a light bike, but it feels light. It just feels brilliant. Woo -hoo -hoo. I've got myself a KTM 1290R Super Duke. Oh yeah. So it's pretty much my dream bike. If I went for a Street Fighter, Ducati, I'd probably have to spend another 10 grand to get the spec I want on that bike. No way. No way. So to me, this is spot on. Ah, oh, what a bike. What a bike. I've got better brakes in as well. So I'm just going to be chatting about this bike randomly as I'm riding it. It isn't a review of this bike, it's just me thinking of things as on the fly. It's got self-cancelling indicators. Which I'm always leaving my indicators on, so so good. So guys, I did a deal to have some parts added, performance parts, bits and pieces. I went straight for the track pack and the performance pack because there's no point having this bike if you haven't got those things on it with the quick shifter. Whoa, rocks in the road. So track pack, performance pack, heated grips which I've got on low now and it's about 8 degrees and they feel, oh they feel lovely, even on low setting. So uh, yeah, it's not, I'm not going to put any carbon on this bike, I'm not going to mess around with it. I'm going to put the seat cowl on the back and that's all I'm going to do. Nothing else. There's no point messing around with these bikes. What I will do though, I'll take it to MCT suspension. There's a video in my playlist somewhere when Gaz took his Super Duke there. So to get the suspension set up for me, because it's not that adjustable, the front is not that adjustable. I know on the 2020 models you can adjust the front forks a lot more than you can on this model. But the ride on this is firm, but not stupidly firm. It feels just about right. Just that V-twin just feels brilliant. It's a little bit vibey like the monster but that's the character of the V-twin. Oh one good thing, it rained really hard in the night, it washed all the roads so they're a tiny bit damp but there's no salt on them. So even if the bike gets a bit grubby it's not going to get covered in salt. If it had been, if it hadn't rained this morning I wouldn't have come out. So the roads are damp-ish, they're not wet, damp in places but there's, uh, there's no salt on them, hence why I'm out. But I've got to get used to the screen, I've got to fiddle around with it, uh, I've got loads of, loads of stuff to play around with on this. But, oh god, just pull that throttle back a little bit. I know why it's called the beast. What a machine. Yeah, my mate Bigsy, I'm meeting in a minute, he's got a brand new uh, Hyper Motard. He traded his old Hypermotard SP in for a new Hypermotard standard model. He pretty much just did what I did, gave his uh, SP back and got a new one. So, he's, I don't think he's really ridden it much, I think this is the first proper ride he's, out, he's, <laughs> he's had on it. Like me, he's got new tyres, so we've got to just be a little bit careful. Right. about five minutes away from Ducati. Right, I'm meeting Bigsy at the petrol station near Ducati. Ducati doesn't open for half an hour. We'll go for a little ride and then we'll go to Ducati for a coffee. That's our plan. Guys, this bike's really comfy. It's probably more comfortable than my Monster. It's very, uh, it's very upright. And the seat feels, 
it's firm but it feels feels really comfy obviously this video is as I said just me blurting out random things you know just along the ride just telling you what I think oh, another thing I've just noticed on this ride the mirrors are brilliant they're probably the tiniest bit vibey but hardly at all they're absolutely superb probably the best mirrors I've ever had on a bike brilliant they're standard uh, they're standard KTM mirror power parts mirror I think they're 160 quid a bit expensive but you know they work that's that's the main thing they look good and they work so I'm really chuffed with those really chuffed heated grips feel good do you know what's good? The quality of this paintwork and where they've got the uh, decals, as in the stickers on the, in the tank, they're built into the tank with lacquer. Uh, superb. The quality, well, you know, I've been adding a few little parts to it over the last couple of days, and the quality of it just is, I uh, can't fault it. It's brilliant. Yeah, I don't know how the guys at Jakarta are going to uh, feel about me pulling up on this. They might, they might sort of light up a petrol bomb and chuck it at me and set me up, set my bike on fire. <laughs> I don't know. So yeah, uh, the guys at Chikati don't mind. And what I will be able to do now is do a head-to-head -head with between this and the Street Fighter. So that's that's good news because a lot of you guys will wonder how this compares to a, a Chikati Street Fighter. Well, in about within a month, I think we're going to find out because I think they're going to get the demo in. And I would love a Street Fighter one day, but I'm not. That's just a lot of money. I'm just not going to pay out all that money for a brand new bike like that. I haven't got the money to do that. And I'm happy with this. This little thing, I'll keep this a good few years. And they might, the next, in maybe a year, two years, they might change the Super Duke enough for me to wa warrant getting the, the next model up from this. As in the revised model. But at the moment, this, this to me is the perfect bike for the money. And it came out pretty much just a little bit over the same price I paid for my Honda CB1000R. Well, I don't know about you guys, but I know what I'd rather have for the money. I'd definitely have this over my CB1000R, no question. Absolutely, yeah, no question at all. And this has everything on it you could ever need on a bike. I don't know what this is missing, really. The only thing that would make it a little bit more special, perhaps, if they put electronic suspension on it. But I guess, yeah, I don't know. I guess if you get this set up, to your weight like I will do an MCT suspension I'm guessing you don't need electronic dampers so maybe I'm wrong you know I just like the dampers on the uh, Ducati uh, Panigale V4 but just pull that throttle back and she just oh my god she's ripped your arms off I'm not even going over 5000 RPM bloody hell The seat's nice and wide, you can just get off the seat, just chuck it into a corner. Woohoo! Oh yeah! This bike is mad! And it even sounds good with a standard exhaust. It's just that exhaust is huge, it's heavy, it's just ridiculous. But I, as I said, I will get rid of that. Maybe Austin Racing, NCAN. Because the Akrapovich pipe is about 700, 800 quid and it's no louder really than the standard pipe and it's a big old lump. So I'll go after market. You don't void your warranty unless you decap your bike and put a full system on it. Well, unless you put the Akrapovich full system, which I'm not going to do at the moment. I might do that at some point down the line, but not yet. Just going to fit a little end can. But this is pretty loud. This sounds brutal. It just feels, I don't know how it feels so light. Weird. And I'm only 5'7", and I'm not flat footed on this. It's quite a tall bike. I'd say it's about the same as a CB1000R, height wise. Right, let's see where the Bigs Meister is. It should be at this petrol station. I'm three minutes early. 
Right, there's no one at Chikati yet. It's a Biggs Meister. Biggs man! How you doing? There's a stand. There it is. Nice. nice to see you. Okay, it's, nice. it's lovely. Love it. Have you just robbed a bank or something? Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> it's cold. That's nice. I like it. It's not dirty yet. Yours is dirty, that. Yeah, you chuffed with it, though? Yeah, it's nice. It's really lively, it's a bit limited, you can't go by 6,000 I know, same as me, I'm going along and just going careful. The tyres are so new, you've got to be so careful. It's brand new, look. I know. You love it, better screen, you've got to get your quick shifter fitted. Yeah, no, I've got to do the miles first on it, but otherwise it's completely different to the other one. No, it's, a, it's a better bike. What a bike! Ah, oh, there's the bigs man. <laughs> this has got some power. Very impressive. For standard suspension, that's not electronic. That's superb. I, I think that's probably on par, pretty much with my Monster 1200S, with its O-Lings. Yo. Bollocks, isn't it? That right, but uh, that suspension's superb. Didn't chuck me up my seat. Well, it did on two big bumps because they're about that deep. I guess Cameron. He's an MT09. I was chatting about your bike. It's for sale. It is. It is. It's got to go. 